Hello! <laughs> Pleasure to see you, everybody. Uh, hello, guys! You on my back, that's why I'm turning right now. Hello, hello. So actually, I saw an introduction that they introduced me as an expert, which I'm not. <laughs> I'm just actually a, a regular human being like all of you are and we are. Um, but I'm very interested in climate issues. And as I've been introduced, I, I do TV here in Korea. I'm an entertainer. And I'm trying to use my voice to raise awareness about climate issues. Bonjour. <laughs> so actually, I'm from Belgium. And it's been 18 years now that I live in Korea. And usually, I do most of my speeches and my TV shows in Korean, so I'm more used to Korean. Uh, but I believe that uh, Korean will be a little bit difficult for you to uh, understand so. And I hope you excuse me my very nice French accent, because I speak French as a first language. So, first of all, thank you all for being here today, because it's really nice to see so many people caring about uh, climate issues, and especially students, and seeing um, such an uh, amount of energy among youth trying to fight uh, the, the climate issue. I'm not going to go too deep in, into uh, the basics. I'm sure everybody of you know we should try to stick under 1.5 degrees of global warming. And uh, do you think we're on the right way? <laughs> Uh, well, we, we, we're not. We're not. It's not really the best uh, way we are right now. Um, as you can see, this is not only about China's emissions, but every emissions around the world are still rising, even though we had a global pandemic. And the lastest news I can see was that we were at 1.2 degrees already, and we only allowed 1.5 degrees to be able to stick as uh, living as we know it up to now. But we talk about the, the climate crisis, but it doesn't feel to me as we are handling it as a crisis. We had actually a crisis recently, right? You all know that we are right now still in the COVID-19 crisis. And how did we handle this? Well, we closed borders. We used our resources to fund what everybody thought was impossible. We were able to make a vaccine in a very short time. We took like, uh, actions to stop people coming outside of their homes. So we took really drastic measures. And we're still not like, getting out of this crisis. So a crisis should be handled as a crisis, but I don't think right now we're handling the global, the global warming crisis as it should. Uh, some of you might, be, might know about this, but recently in Belgium and Germany, there was big floods in, around August. I think there's some German students here, maybe, or from Belgium. No? <laughs> I, I, hope, I hope you've been fine. Your, your family was OK? It was not around that area? OK, well, that's good to know. Uh, and actually, this happened really close to my home. But you know, we always hear about like environment crisis and linked to global change, to, glo to uh, climate change, but we never really get to experience them. More in, 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 actually, I didn't myself. Maybe some of you did. And so I wanted to have a feel for myself. So actually, I went to, to Belgium. And this is a picture I took myself over there. And you can see this home has been totally destroyed by the flood. And I really realized that it was not the future anymore. We are already <laughs> in the climate crisis. I was able to talk to some guys there, and all their life, suddenly, in one day, finished. They worked all their life to build their home, buy their home. They had so much memories there. And now they're left with nothing but debris. It's a totally destroyed home. That made me sad, <laughs> to be honest. And actually, I think most of you maybe, when you think about climate, climate change, must, you don't have a great feeling, right? I, I experienced this strongly several years ago when I went to, to see a fashion show. And after the fashion show, I, I went 
to the parking lot to, to go into the car. And next to the parking lot, there was a big pile of trash. And actually, they were trashing <laughs> all the materials from the fashion show I just watched directly there. And they had like maybe 10 fashion shows the same day. And that day, I was like, I spent a week like carrying my tumbler. <laughs> And maybe I like, didn't drink 10 bottles of plastic, but the amount of waste I'm saving through my action compared to what is happening every hour at this fashion show was nothing. And I really felt this despair. And I was like, do our action don't matter compared to this big, such a big crisis that we're facing? In Korea, we call this Kihu Ulchen. In English, you can Climate like, Blue. Climate Blues. It's when you realize that maybe the problem is too big and you can't do anything to solve it. And that's how I was several years ago. Uh, this was the pile of trash. <laughs> Not the actual one, but just to show a bit the amount of trash I saw at the end of this. Um, and then one friend, a friend of mine, recommended to me to watch a documentary called The Game Changers. Have any of you watched this documentary? Maybe yes, no? No? Okay, well, a new documentary wa to watch for you. <laughs> I love documentaries, so <laughs> I'm going to recommend another one after this too. Um, this documentary is about athletes, really strong athletes, incredible athletes. There's uh, MMA fighters, there's American football athletes, there's like the strong strongest men in the world, like competition uh, attendants, there's like cycler, uh, marath ultra marathon runners, a lot of athletes, and they all have one thing in common. They are all plant-based. They all eat a vegan diet. And actually, it shocked me, because I, I was always interested in like, changing my diet to a more environment-friendly diet, but for me, it was always uh, a dilemma between saving the earth or being healthy. Because I was always told that to get big, strong muscle, you need to eat meat. And this documentary showed me the opposite. And actually, everything is science-backed, so they tell you like all the studies that been, they've been looking at. And one of the guys there, <laughs> you can see his picture of him, if you see him, you're not going to expect he's vegan, right? Like, he looks super strong and like the biggest meat eater I, I, you can met. But he's totally vegan. And he won several world records for being the strong and strongest man in the world. And everybody keeps asking him this question. How can you be as strong as an ox without eating meat? And what he says is, have you ever seen an ox eat meat? And then I was like, oh, wait, wait a second, right, right, I, I've never seen a cow eat meat. And actually, all the strongest animals we know on Earth, like the elephant or the rhinoceros, they're all plant-based. And even our closest, um, our closest, one of the closest animals we have, the gorilla, is also plant-based and, and very strong animal, right? And so I started to get a bit, like, disrupts because everything I knew about health and how to be strong and healthy suddenly was shaped. And so I start to think, do things I know about our diets and the environment maybe were wrong? Maybe did I have the wrong facts? And so I started looking into it. And I'm going to share with you some of the few facts I learned. So first of all, you need to know that the meat Consumption in the world is really rising high. As people get richer, they eat more meat. And you can see China has really got richer in the past days, and their meat consumption is really, really going higher. And I can tell you already that this is not going to be sustainable. So first of all, the Amazon. I'm sure all of you know that to save climate, we should save the Amazon. Well, the fastest way to save the Amazon is eat less beef. If you can see here, it's a map of all the fire happening in the Amazons. They don't cut wood to use it as wood. They just burn them because they want to use more space. Why do they use more space? To raise cattle or to actually grow feed, to feed the cattle. More than 80% of the Amazon deforestation is linked 
directly to the beef industry. I didn't know that it was that much. Greenhouse gas, you know that we all should like, put less gas in, <laughs> in the earth, uh, in, in the sky, because <laughs> or, or we're not going to meet our goal of 1.5%, 1.5 degrees. And so the, the number that usually people refer to is from the UNFAO, and they say that 14.5% of all gas emissions come from the meat and dairy industry. But if ever you look a bit more into it, they first said it was 18%, and then they said 14.5%. They changed suddenly their numbers. And if you go on the official site of the UNFAO, you can see that they have official sponsors, and the sponsor is the meat industry, the dairy industry, and the poultry industry, the feed industry. And that sounded a little bit weird for me, to be honest. Like, and so I looked a bit more into it, and some other people took the numbers from the UNFAO and redid numbers, and they think that maybe 51% of the the global emissions are from the animal agriculture. There's even another guy that did other research. They published this in a science paper recently, and they say that maybe 87% could be linked to, uh, to agriculture, animal agriculture. Because if ever we use all the space that animals live on, we could reuse this space to make forest, and that could absorb again the CO2 and put it back onto Earth. So we could actually, like, reverse some of the climate actions. I'm not going to tell you which number is right. To be honest, I'm very confused about this. But what I know for sure is that 14.5% is the number that the animal industry accepts. And it's going to be more than that. Fishing, well, you know that there's a big plastic pollution in the ocean. <laughs> I'm sure you all heard about that. In the Pacific Ocean, there's something called the big plastic island. And actually, in that ocean, more than 52% of that plastic mass is directly linked to fisheries because it's made out of plastic lines, rope, and fishing nets. I was so surprised when I learned about this. If you want to learn more about this, there's a nice documentary called Seaspiracy where they talk about the impact of fisheries on our environment. And then the pandemic risk. Well, most of the pandemics were linked to animal uh, farming because we put all these animals together and through deforestation we meet animals that we should not meet. Apparently Ebola also was, came to us because we went too close to where the bats lived and that's why we were uh, infected by this disease. So many of the pandemic that we faced up to now were linked also to uh, meat consumption. Actually, I see time is running out so I won't have time to go in everything but what you need to know is that there's a bit funding in the industry these are the numbers, and all these fundings are way more than what we would need to save world hunger. And they say that the cost of meat in the USA would normally need to rise, raise at least three times, which would mean that the Mac burger, a Big Mac, would cost around $15, which I don't think I would buy a Big Mac for $15. Anyway, let's move a bit into this. And what I want to say is that I don't want to eat a salad every day. And people think that, you know, vegan diet, plant-based diet is just carrots and salad. And I want to show you wrong because plant-based food is super tasty these days. Here are some of the, my favorite plant-based food. This is chicken made out of mushrooms. This is a pepperoni pizza. Of course, vegan place. This is eggs they made out of um, beans. And it scrambles just like an egg scramble. It tastes the same. I tried it recently. All my friends were bluffed. This is Beyond Burger. It tastes almost the same as a real beef burger. This is sushi made out of fruits. And this is a kamja tang. It's Korean food made out of, of plants. These are really nice restaurants that you can see. And tell me that this looks like rabbit food. To be honest, when I see this, my mouth is like, I went to this restaurant yesterday. And the cream pasta there, oh my, woo, mwah. I wish we could all gather. If you come to Korea next time, I'll invite you. Let's go eat over there, okay? Um, here is some Korean food. They, they make kamjatang, but for uh, as plant-based option. And this is food I made myself. And you don't need to go full vegan. There's this stuff called Meat is Monday. You take one day off meat and eat more fruits and vegetables. It's good for you and it's good for the planet. There are several several uh, applications also you can see. Uh, Happy Cow is a global application to see the, the plant-based restaurants around your place. What I learned when I start to go plant-based is that 
the power is in us. If you see on the top left, Danone, which is one of the biggest dairy industry in the world, are moving more and more of the industry towards plant-based milk alternatives. And McDonald's and Burger King released all plant-based versions of their Big Mac and their hamburgers. Why do you think this happened? Do you think that suddenly Danone and like McDonald's decided, oh, we love the earth, we're going to save the planet. Do you think that's what happened? Or do you think people like you and me ask for this? And then they're like, okay, we need to actually change because people are changing. They want us to show that we care about the planet, the environment, and maybe the animals. This is what happened in Korea also. You can see that several companies started to do, go more, towards more uh, plant-based options. You can see also recently there's a, a car company that's a subsidiary of Hyundai that said that from 2025, all their car will be electric. This change to happen because we asked for it. We really should remember that any change that happened in society were always came from us. And that's when I start to get confidence that we actually can maybe make a real change. Don't forget that every day you buy something, you're voting. You vote for that company. You say, I want more product like this. Every time you actually vote also, you're doing something. Because you say, I want more people that take care of the climate, of social issues. And together, that's when we really make change. And we prove that we can make change. If McDonald's start to release vegan burgers, well, we've said everything. Change can happen. We've proved it. So don't get in despair and remember, vote. Vote actually for politicians that care about climate actions and vote in your everyday life by consuming less products that impact the environment. Thank you very much for today's uh, talk. I hope you liked it. Merci beaucoup. <laughs>